Hi guys, glad to have you with us once again on Star Property TV's Inspiring Individual series. I'm really excited about today's episode and we really hope it benefits you. Our guest today is widely accepted as Malaysia's top business growth expert. He's the founder and CEO of Leverage Lab, a company offering cutting-edge business growth method, technology and consultancy in sales, marketing, system and team development. Over the span of 17 years, he's helped thousands and thousands of people across all industries and all walks of life. Hi, welcome, Jiwen. Uh, thanks for taking oh, the time off. Lovely to be here. To join us, you know. Um, before we get started, you know, perhaps you yeah. want to tell us about your background and and why did you end up, you know, becoming a business coach? Okay. So, um, well, I've owned many businesses. Uh, many years ago, when I first mm -hmm. graduated from university, I came back from England. I decided, hey, you know what? I'm just an entrepreneur. I'm just going to start. So, started okay. a travel agency. Then I had a cyber cafe. I had an internet consulting company. I've made money. I lost money. Got cheated <laughs> by partners. All kinds of stuff. So, I went through a, a, quite a lot. And then when an opportunity came for me to become a business coach, I took mm -hmm. it. I said, you know what? I think I'm going to do this. I'm going to start coaching business. I learned, learned a lot as well. And I would like to continue my learning and to get this right. And since then, I got very excited. I, I got involved with the franchise and, uh, and I've left the franchise now and um, I did very well. And I learned many things and I've worked with many, many people. I mean, in the last um, 17 years, I think yeah. I've worked with over 50,000 people and it's been truly, oh. truly an honor actually to have done that. I've helped businesses make millions, uh, hundreds of thousands of millions. And uh, I've learned methods, methodologies. I've come up with a lot of mm -hmm. my own strategies, my own methods. And one of the things that it's really nice is uh, you sleep well at night. <laughs> it's and and I, I, what I, I kind of businesses now? All kinds well, of businesses. Um, the industries I work can be anything. You could be a manufacturing company. You could be a mm -hmm. you could be a, you could be a travel agency. You could be you could be a restaurant. Um, you could be a listed company. You okay. could be a very small one man show. Um, all kinds of business. Essentially, it's essentially this. When I talk to business people, they come to me. Yeah. They, say they all struggle with three main things. They want more customers. They want more revenues, yeah. and they want more profits. And one of the first things I get them to see is that all of business is only about two things. And that's it. It's just two things. And I get them to see that. And it's about capturing and keeping customers. That's it. So whatever business you start, you want to create all these methods to capture customers and all these methods to keep the customers you've caught. Keep them coming back again and again and again. And so it's a process. It's a game. It's, um, we do a whole lot of things, actually. All right. This is very interesting. Yeah. And, and before we proceed further, uh, Jiwen actually has a gift for us and uh, perhaps you want to tell oh, them yeah. why? Sure. Um, well, for those listeners out there, if you own a business, I'm giving out 20 complimentary one-hour sessions with me uh, where I will analyze your business, take you step by step through all the different challenges and show you how to make some seriously big money with your company. So it's just for the first 20, I guess, we'll go through all the steps that's uh, coming up on your screen. Uh, follow those steps and yeah, I hope you're one of the 20. All right. And... Uh, so moving on, many are not actually aware that you're actually a property enthusiast, you know. And, That's right, and, yeah, I'm a property investor as well. How, how were you exposed to, to the business of property investing? And well, I was asked once this question, um, many, many years back actually, I was asked this question, someone said, if you had one regret, if you have one regret in your entire career of business, you've been in business now 18, 19 years, uh, what's mm -hmm. your one regret? And my only regret, actually, is I didn't start early enough in property investing. Mm -hmm. I've invested in many properties. I've bought lots of properties. But I didn't start early enough. I wish I did, actually. It's really <laughs> fun. Um, property is an absolutely incredible way to build your wealth. Mm -hmm. And many people say, Jivan, I want to be a millionaire or a multimillionaire. But they don't know how to go about it. Property is one of those ways. And um, I'm going to be sharing a whole lot of things that you can actually do to do that. you say property is still you know, the best investment vehicle to, I mean, well, uh, um, in this day and in under the current market circumstances? Well, property is one of my favorites and I'm very biased in that sense. I love property. But mm. to be fair, here's the thing. When someone tells me, Jivan, I want to be a multimillionaire or, or uh, millionaire, multimillionaire, decamillionaire, whatever you want, um, there are only really three ways to do this. There, there, I call it three vehicles to do it. And it's B, R and P. B stands for business, mm -hmm. R stands for real estate, P stands for paper. Mm -hmm. So paper meaning um, business, of course, you're either employed or you're an employee or an employer. Yeah. Real estate would be the only two types in the world, which is yeah. um, either landed or sky, which is things like offices, condos, um, so strata. Mm -hmm. And paper would be things like uh, unit trust, uh, um, you, you look at EPF, your unit trust, your ASB, mm -hmm. your stocks, shares, futures, yeah. options, all that's paper. So when a person wants to become extremely wealthy, you have to realize you need to participate in all three. As all much three. as you love property like me and we're biased, 
you have to do all three. So I have investments in business, in real estate and in paper. So they're mm -hmm. all three very, very important and you will build your wealth if you do that. So I do, sometimes I'll teach someone some financial planning and mm -hmm. I'll, I'll get them to see that and I say, hey, look, don't be biased towards one of, just one of these investment vehicles, do all three. But property, however, um, the reason why it's beautiful is simply because of the leverage in it. Like uh, if I have a million ringgit, I can buy, how much can I buy? I can, I can use that million for 10 million property which is 10% mm -hmm. down payment, yeah. or I can use that million for 1 million worth of shares. So with shares, I have to use the whole million. With property, I only need 10% need of whatever I want to yeah. buy. You see, So there's a lot of leverage in property, which I, which I really like. And you know, uh, can you explain to us how one can use uh, business cash flow to invest in properties? Okay. So when you, when you make business, now people often ask, ask me this question, so what's the ultimate purpose of a business? Mm -hmm. Now, I, I'll joke with them and I say, look, the ultimate purpose of a business really is to buy property. <laughs> so <laughs> that's really the reason right. why you're in it. So when you, when you run a business, firstly, of course, make sure that you're taking home five figures from your business. Many people run businesses for years and they don't do very well mm -hmm. and they pay themselves peanuts. Um, out of the company in the end, everyone else is earning everything and they, the owners aren't any, making anything. Okay. So the first step is make sure you're taking home five figures. And you've got to really see how you're going to run your business so that you can take home five figures. When you're doing that, you're now raising cash flow to buy property. So you're raising the cash to, for your down payments and which then you can buy property. And of course, um, when you start doing that, your property, when you start getting tenants, the rentals can then pay for the loan. Mm -hmm. And it goes on. So business is an excellent source of cash flow. It's a very, very good way to raise a huge amount of cash that you can then go and use as a deposit to buy your property. Mm -hmm. And of course, employment is another way to do it. And the challenge with employment is if you're not in sales, say you're, you're a manager in HR, for example, then your pay is fixed, your salary is fixed. Mm -hmm. So that, that's, that's what you have to play with. If you're in business, there's no limit. Yep. If you get really good in marketing, you get really good at selling, you can make more and more and more. So mm -hmm. I'm, I'm very biased again towards business, towards yep. property, things like that. Um, so yeah, it's, it's business is, as a vehicle to generate a huge amount of cash flow. And once you've made this, generated this cash flow, go and invest, 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 invest. And you know, uh, you've mentioned that you have this very simple but extremely powerful uh, financial, oh, financial planning, planning method. method. Yeah. Well, um, what I've noticed over the years is I've worked with more and more entrepreneurs and even employees. Sometimes um, large listed companies would bring me in to coach their employees. And um, I discovered something and that is majority of people have absolutely no idea how to manage the finances. Yep. They have no financial planning this in, my, in my mind. This is my personal just, finance. Right? Yeah, the personal okay. finances. So yep. for example, when your salary enters your bank account, what do you do? Most people just have no clue, you see, so most of it, they'll just use it up and they use most of it. So I created this, this very, very simple system. It's a triangular system. Okay. So it's really powerful. So it's just, here's what it is. So, so what you got to do is you have to open three bank accounts. Okay. okay. So you go out there and you open three bank accounts. And by the way, I've taught this now to thousands and thousands of people and, and it's incredible what people are doing with this. So you open three bank accounts, there's one on the top. So you put on top of the triangle, there's one, one on the left, one on the right. So just imagine, okay, there's All three right. here. So the top bank accounts, you open three bank accounts. Um, and again, people often ask me, what's the best bank to open a bank account in? Right. You want to guess? What's the best bank to open a, an account in? I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> the one near your house. So <laughs> whichever is near your house or near your office, something nearby, something convenient. Yep. So you've got your three bank accounts. So the first account right on top, that's called your sitting account. Okay. So you've got your sitting account on top. And then on your left-hand side, the account down here, this is called your lifestyle account. Okay. And over here on the right-hand side, this is, this is called your profit account. So you've got three bank accounts. Now the sitting account is just for money to sit. The minute money enters your life, any kind of money, so it could mm -hmm. be your salary, could be your bonuses, could be your director's allowance, could be 50 ringgit you found on the floor, yeah. could be any money that enters your life, goes straight into the sitting account. And the minute it enters the sitting account, you're now gonna make one of your biggest financial decisions in your life, and that is this. What is my percentage split? So how many percent will go into my lifestyle account how many percent goes into my profit account? Mm -hmm. That will change your entire financial future. So if you decide, say you do an 80-20, so 80% into your lifestyle account, 20% mm -hmm. into your profit account, the lifestyle account is for you to live, to enjoy your life, spend your money, buy whatever you want to buy, buy that handbag, get that car, whatever you want. Right. The profit account is money you never ever touch, okay. except for investments. And investments meaning BRP, investments related yep. to those three things. Okay. So. If you did an 80-20, so let's say a person earns, um, as an example, let's say he earns uh, 5000 a month. He's got a salary of 5000 a month and says, well, Jivanin, that's not a lot. But he decides to put 20% into his profit account. So that's 1000 ringgit. Yep. 
in a year that's about 12 well maybe 15 with your bonuses and everything yeah. so that's about 15000 a year doesn't look like a lot but in 3 years now you've got enough money so in 3 years you've got 45k so you've now got 45k that's a down payment for $400,000 condo yeah so now you have something so you can literally buy one property every 1 to 3 years so yeah. when you want if you want to buy more you want to invest more only two things you got to do one improve your percentage split maybe split more yeah. instead of 80 20 maybe 70 30 learn to live on yeah. 70% of your income just live on it and the balance 30 you never touch or two earning ability increase the ability to earn more so instead of earning 5000 learn to earn 7 earn yeah. 10 give more value to your customers more value to your uh, um, uh, your to your bosses to your department and you start earning more and then the split gets better mm -hmm. and see the thing why this is so powerful is you do it without thinking yeah. Most people, they say, well, I'll save some money. Let's see how it is at the end of the month. Yeah. I say, don't do that. The minute your salary enters, go online, split it. If you yeah. can direct debit it, auto, auto debit Automated, it, it's even better. Yeah. Yeah. But you split it and then you don't look at this account until it's fat enough. And now you begin to invest and you can invest in unit trust, uh, properties, whatever you want. Mm -hmm. But do that. Do the split. Do the three account system. So some heroes I'll get will say things like, um, well, let me have two accounts. I think I can manage it with two accounts. Mm. I can do that. I tell them I've tested everything. We've, I've been teaching this for 10 years now. And I say, look, don't. Because psychology will come in. And psychologically, when you put money into an account, you're like, well, I just won't put this aside. Let mm -hmm. me try. So don't do that. Just put it into a sitting account and split and never look at the other one. So the psychology then is protecting you. Because otherwise, you like some people will say things like this. Well, Jivan, you know, the iPhone 6 is out. <laughs> and I'll just borrow from my profit account. Go and buy the iPhone. Next month, I'll pay back. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you can't do that. I tell them, so look, don't ever touch that one. So this financial planning method, it's a, it's a real no-brainer method. Mm -hmm. You don't have to budget the heck out of your life. Some people budget everything, write a list of everything. Yep. You have your lifestyle account, enjoy it. That's do whatever you want with that, just don't finish it. Then there's no money left. Mm -hmm. And the profit account, don't touch it. It's purely for your investment. So okay. this system of the three account system, it's something very easy to do. Anyone can do it. Employees can do it. Employers can do it. Um, whoever can do it. And those who are, are buying lots of properties. All right. That's very interesting. I think I should get started yeah, with that. Get started straight away. And, and now, you, you say one of the ways uh, we can improve our ability to invest is to earn more. That's so right. We'll, That's we'll right. talk more about uh, how we can offer more value to our, to our employers or Yeah, so, or so, so let's look at employees. Um, it's always a very big question. As an employee, how do I earn more? What do I do? How do I become more valuable yes. to the company? Um, so, so, so let me give you something really simple here. Um, and I'm actually in the process of, uh, I've started my doctorate. And my thesis, uh, which I'll be by researching, is actually um, effective methods for increasing high performance in employees. Mm -hmm. and, um, and because it's such a critical area. So I've got a huge amount of research on this thing. But um, let me give you a heads up on a couple of things. So if you're an employee and you want to be severely highly paid, you want to yeah. do really well, you want companies to throw money at you, you want to be promoted like crazy, three things. Three things you got to really get right. So, and see, this is what bosses like. This is what entrepreneurs love, bosses love, managers love. And you do these three things, you're an extremely valuable employee. Your pay will go up. So here's the first one. So the first one is speed. In anything that you're required to do, do it fast. Okay. Do it really fast. So if someone requires you to prepare a report by Friday, get it done by Monday or even Wednesday. Get okay. it done. So speed is, of course, the critical one. Mm -hmm. And the second one is my actually my favorite all-time value, and that is diligence. Uh, many years ago, King Solomon said this in the book of Proverbs. He said, the diligent man shall stand before kings. Mm -hmm. And I used to wonder about that. And later on, I realized why. So what's diligence? Diligence is getting something done accurately and getting it done right. For example, let's say you're asked to do telemarketing. Mm -hmm. A hardworking person will just pick up the phone and call and call and call and do all the telemarketing with the scripts that he has. A diligent person will make the calls but keep changing the script until they get it right. Mm -hmm. Now they're locking in a huge amount of appointments. So a diligent staff is a person, if say she prepares um, a sales and purchase agreement, every single thing in the agreement is correct. It's all mm -hmm. done right. The commas, the grammar, the, the acts that they need to refer to, everything is in order. There's no mm -hmm. mistakes there. So a diligent person is extremely in high demand. Like imagine if you're going to go for a heart operation, you want your surgeon to be diligent, yeah. you know, don't leave anything in you <laughs> when right. it's done. So that's, that's the second one. And the third one is ability. And when I look at earning ability, the word ability, 
increase your ability in to do more things that are valuable. For example, social media. I often get uh, much older business owners who come to me and say things mm -hmm. like, "Given I don't like social media, I don't like Facebook, I don't like LinkedIn, I just don't want to do it, I'm not interested in social media. Mm -hmm. My answer is always, look, if you don't like social media, that's fine, but someone in your office better love it. Because social media is here to stay, it's not going anywhere. Yeah. So somebody better really love it. So earning ability, for example, maybe you want to increase your ability to perform in social media, on graphic design, or maybe your ability to do marketing, ability to sell. So take a look at your department or take a look at where you're going, where you want to go, mm -hmm. and ask yourself, what are the abilities I must master in that department, in that area? Mm -hmm. So if you master these three things, you're one of the most valuable employees in the company, and your pay will just start to fly up. And, and you, you talk about values, you know, but yeah. at the end of the day, young people, especially when we're just starting out the mm -hmm. workplace, what we need is also technical skills. That's right. What That's are right. the most essential skills do you think that are uh, all Gen Y you know, starting out the workplace need to ensure not just success today, but all, all Well, a very, in very key well. critical skill is face-to-face -face communication. Everyone's a keyboard warrior these days. You know, everybody <laughs> okay, can yeah. say all kinds of things on the keyboard. The minute you meet them face-to-face, -face, they, can't, they can't even string a sentence mm -hmm. correctly. So face-to-face -face communication is critical because in anything you do at some point, you're going to go face-to-face -face with either the customer, um, the manager, the CEO, yeah. the boss, somebody. So face-to-face -face, um, communication is absolutely critical. Develop the ability to communicate well, to get your ideas across. Because mm -hmm. people who communicate well, they are the ones who are going to climb up all the ladders. Um, if they can get their ideas across, they can inspire people, touch, move, inspire people, get people fired up. These are the ones who are moving places. Mm -hmm. So one of the key skills is, of course, communication. And another skill really is marketing. Marketing. In today's world, um, you've got to really um, look at that. Marketing has changed in its dimension. I mean, so many things have changed. Of course, some of the old school methods still work. Um, like if you, you'd be surprised, faxing, direct mailing, they still yeah. work, yeah. <laughs> surprisingly. Yeah. And, um, but then again, and, and now if you look at it, there's so many newer methods that are also just as cost effective. Mm -hmm. And um, you could be looking anything from Instagram to Snapchat to Facebook pages, mm -hmm. to anything out there. But develop your ability to market. And when it comes to marketing, you want to look at your cost of acquisition, meaning my cost of acquiring a customer, how much am I spending? If I put a 2,000 ringgit ad in the papers and I get one customer, it means I paid 2,000 for that one customer. Yeah. I take the same 2,000 and I, I take it to, say, social media, yeah. and I invest it in bloggers, for instance. Mm -hmm. How many sales would I get? So yeah. say I got 10 sales. Now I've paid a yeah. fraction of the cost for the same number of of uh, same amount of money. Yeah. So marketing is a critical component and to understand marketing, you must look at acquisition costs, which is the cost of acquiring either a prospect or a client. Mm -hmm. So how much am I paying to acquire these people? So that's another very critical skill and in anyone who's in any level of the company, you people need to know that you're good at some things and that's where marketing comes in. Yeah. People need to know you, you can't just be quiet anymore. You've got to communicate something you got to market. So these are two very important skills and lots of others. Um, of course, I would also say on a personal level, your financial planning skills, like what I shared, mm -hmm. plan that and then um, go and invest, buy a property. Any chance you get, go and buy. I keep telling people, I've got clients, I'll twist their arms. After a few years of working with me, I'll make them buy properties. <laughs> and they'll be like, yeah, yeah, you know, should I? There was this one husband and wife team. Um, they, they own one of the largest, um, the largest range of badminton rackets that they sell online, mm -hmm. largest in the world. Okay. It's called badmintonbay.com. And since they started with me, when I started working after a year with them, I doubled the number of properties they invested, not just their revenues we doubled, but the number of properties that they would buy. Mm -hmm. And simply because of um, the value you get when you invest. So again, um, as an employee, you, you need to have a bigger picture on your, on your climb mm -hmm. as you go up. You know, take a look at your, your diligence, your speed, your ability. Take a look at the value that you're adding to your department, your boss. Take a look at your own personal investment, financial planning, very, very critical. And you talk about face-to-face -face communication. I know uh, yeah. a lot of employers today lament about the fact that a lot of our uh, mm -hmm. fresh graduates, they have difficulties in this area. Right. What can they do to improve their, their Actually, communication skills? Um, many people have this challenge in terms of communication. One of the first things you can do is vocabulary. Mm -hmm. um, I remember when I, when I went to England and, um, and I thought my English was really good. <laughs> and so when I went there to do my, I did a double degree, I was there for four years. Mm -hmm. And I went there and I realized, wow, there's so many words I don't know. When I had to do assignments and things like that, I thought, wow, I don't know a lot of stuff. So what I did was, and, and this is what I tell everyone else, your best friend is a dictionary. Mm -hmm. You go get yourself a dictionary and you get a little exercise book, you call it your vocabulary book. Mm -hmm. And every time you come across a word you don't understand, you write it down. Yep. 
and you define yep. it and then you try and use that word in conversation again. So now you're building your vocabulary. Yep. And as you build your vocabulary, so that's it, that's the first step. And the next, that builds your confidence. Now once you've done that, now learn to speak in a way that a person can understand meaning. Um, many, uh, some time back, uh, a client of mine told me this is a given, you're responsible for what you say and mm -hmm. how they listen. I thought, oh, well, that's interesting. What do you mean by that? So he says, I know I, un I understand that I'm responsible for what I say. Completely get that. Mm -hmm. But how they listen? She, well, she said, think about it, Jivan, because there's a group of people listening to something you're saying. And if they don't understand it, the problem isn't them, it's actually you. Mm -hmm. I thought, wow. So that's yeah. when I began to pay a lot more attention to how I say things, not just what I say, but how yeah. I say it. Because I want them to listen accurately. So sometimes I'll break things down. I'll say, okay, these are the five steps or the four things so that mm -hmm. people can really understand. So in, in, um, for those who want to communicate better, improve your vocabulary and be responsible for how the person is listening. Check, say, do you get it? Do you understand what I meant? Mm -hmm. person says, no, I don't understand. Explain again. Mm -hmm. Don't say, oh, the guy's dumb. He doesn't get what I'm trying to say. Yeah. No, if he, and like, you know, there are no poor, te there are no poor students, they're poor teachers. Okay. <laughs> you see? So yeah. if he doesn't get something, then maybe you need to spend some time to explain it again yeah. and so on. So that, that's, that's uh, two really critical things you can do, actually, to and improve communication. Very interesting, and you know, over the course, uh, over seventeen years, you know, coaching yeah. business, business, uh, business leaders, business owners, and and long time, yes, yeah, very long time. <laughs> and and can you tell us what separate the greats and the goods? You know, what are, what are the distinctive traits that you can see across all the great? Yeah, this is actually quite easy to do, actually. Um, the businesses that succeed versus the ones that fail. So I've worked with people of all kinds of industries. You can name it from products, services, you name mm. it. And the ones that succeed, here's the thing. Coming back to my uh, um, original statement that I made uh, much earlier, which is business is about only two things, capture and keep customers. Yep. Once you get that, okay, everything I do is about capturing customers and keeping customers. The next step is there are only four parts to a business. So any business on the planet, whether you're a listed company or you're a small kadai runchit by the side there, okay. you only have four parts to your business. So here are the four parts, marketing, sales, systems, and team. Mm -hmm. So as an entrepreneur or, or a manager or a business leader or a CEO, take a look at these four areas and ask yourself, what's actually happening in each of these areas? What's going on in my marketing? How mm -hmm. am I marketing? What am I doing? What am I saying? What's the message I'm sending? How, how's our brand performing? Sales. How are we converting inquiries into customers? Mm -hmm. What are we doing to do that? What, what are the sales scripts we have in place? What are our sales kits? How many salespeople do we have? Spend a lot of time looking at that. Third one is systems. Systems meaning, the, the, I call it the three Ps, planning, policies, and proce procedures. So what, what are all the planning that takes place in your organization, the policies you have for how things should be done, and the procedures, yeah. step by step, of how something actually gets done. Mm -hmm. So th that's where the systems come in. And finally, team. When you look at team, you at some point will, will get hit with this realization that if you get the right team on your bus, you can take this bus somewhere amazing. Mm -hmm. So you really want to work, get the right team on and make or make people into the right team. You want to you make sure that your team is a fantastic team, it's a championship team. How do you do that? Now, lots of answers, lots of areas, but uh, to keep it simple, three things to keep in mind. Entrust, equip, let go. So entrust them, be very clear what you're entrusting a team member for. Mm -hmm. Specifically tell them, explain, um, give them the contracts, give them KPIs, whatever it is, entrust, and then equip them. Mm -hmm. So that means prepare them to do the job really, really well. Rather give them the training, give them the tools, do all of those things, and then let go. Let them do it. Mm -hmm. And have regular team meetings weekly or even daily where you have check-ins to see how things are going. So uh, those entrepreneurs who do very, very well, those of us out there who are, who are really legging it and doing it really mm -hmm. well, are the ones who understand the four things and the work involved in all those four. Those that have blind spots, they go in and say, oh, I hate sales. I just don't want to do sales. Mm -hmm. And they don't develop a sales department, sales team. Mm -hmm. You've got a problem. So as an entrepreneur, if you're listening, these are the four things you've got to really pay attention. And also, on a personal level, we are for individuals, mm -hmm. we've become uh, all too familiar with you know, Malcolm Gladwell's 10,000 hour yep. rule or yep. Warren Buffett's 25-5 mm -hmm. rules, which basically they encourage people to narrow down their focuses. That's right. And you know, gain mastery by working that's right. towards the 10,000 hour of doing yep. you know, the same thing. But with disruptions happening across all in industries mm -hmm. you know, at such a rapid, uh, such a rapid pace, you know, like we, it's not just blue collar workers that are losing mm -hmm. their jobs, robots, mm -hmm. you know, and it's, it's, even, uh, it's even 
even fin financial advisors yeah. these days, yeah. you know, even doctors perhaps. Yeah. And so what would you advise a Gen okay. Y? Would you tell um, Firstly, it's a very it's a very good advice at ten thousand hours, mm -hmm. uh, because if you spend ten thousand hours on anything, you'd be really good at it. Mm -hmm. I recently um, took up the violin. I'm okay. completely hopeless at it. I mean, <laughs> every time I play, I mean, cats run away. You know, it sounds like <laughs> I'm killing a cat or something. I'm just really, really bad. And um, but I thought I would take on something that I, I know it's extremely difficult mm -hmm. and try and take take this ten thousand hours on. So I started spending time on it, and and I hired a personal tutor to tutor me. And after my fifth session, I found that hey, I can actually do some scales now, I can do something. All right, so, so the 10,000 hours is, is critical, it's very important. However, there's a catch. And that's here, here's what it is. If you're going to spend 10,000 hours on anything, the big word to always remember is relevance. Mm -hmm. It's got to be relevant. So for example, if you're spending 10,000 hours on how to sell records in the age of online music, you're really going to struggle. Mm -hmm. If you're spending 10,000 hours on, on um, creating tools, for GPS, when the handphones have GPS already on it, mm -hmm. uh, you're going to have a problem. So relevance is a very big deal, actually. So pay attention to what's relevant right now in your industry, what's relevant in your field, in, in your work, mm -hmm. and spend the 10,000 hours there. All so right. And then you'll do very, very well. And, and uh, when the times are tough, right, mm -hmm. and there are like, you know, economic uh, economic downturns, and stuff, how do you advise uh, employees or business load, business leaders, not, not, not advise them per se, but how do you help them stay motivated? And, and more than that, how do you tell them mm -hmm. to keep their team motivated? A couple of things actually. Number one, I always recommend hiring a coach. Uh, that's a business coach, a life coach, any kind of coach. Mm -hmm. Why? Because then you've got external accountability. Someone's holding you accountable to things mm -hmm. you've got to do. So that's the first thing. Second is expand your perspective on anything. For example, see, when you're struggling, when you have a problem and you feel that you, wow, I'm scared, you know, things are bad, this and this is going on, your perspective can become very unresourceful. So to become more resourceful, you want to open up your mind. And the way to do that, today it's actually really easy. Back then it may have been harder. Yeah. Um, people would say, buy books, read books. Of course, I recommend to do that. Here are three things you can do. One, read books. Mm -hmm. um, read a lot of good books. There's so, so much of good books out there. Stop reading the mental garbage, you know, <laughs> some of the magazines and, and things that people write on. Get some good books, read that. So that's one. The second thing they can do is actually TED Talks. Mm -hmm. Just sit down yeah. every day, listen to one TED Talk. A mm -hmm. TED Talk a day, that's it. Why? Because it may not even be relevant, yeah. but it will open your mind, you know. And um, yeah. when you have an open mind, more things are possible for you. For example, listen to a TED Talk on the King of Bhutan. Talk about Bhutan, it was incredible, that TED Talk. Yeah. And you'd be thinking, that's nothing to do with my job, but hey, it's very powerful. So that's the second thing you can do, listen to a TED Talk. And the third thing is read journal articles. Not just books, but journal articles, because um, especially, say, for example, the Harvard Business Review. Mm -hmm. It keeps a lot of current information yeah. your way. So you become more aware of what's actually going on, what's happening. Most people today, when they go online, the first thing they do, they look at all the bad news. Yeah. And they get bombarded with all kinds of bad news. Then you feel depressed, you know. <laughs> By 12 noon, you're depressed. Yeah. You're like, oh my God, all yeah. sorts of bad things are happening because that's where your perspective is. But when you start going to TED Talks, you start going to books, start going to journals, your perspective goes from, God, we have so much problems, to, wow, the possibilities are endless. Yeah. Yeah. So, so yeah, I think... Um, that shift is going to be a very good shift, actually. And at Star Property, you know, one of our mm -hmm. writers actually wrote a very riveting piece on, on the idea of taking up a second job so that you can mm -hmm. actually buy a property. And, and, and we notice these trends, you know, in, in the West or, or even like Hong Kong and Taiwan, you know, the culture mm -hmm. of side hustles and all. Would you encourage people to start a side hustle? Yes and no. Um, so let me, let me explain that. It's firstly, if you're not making money with your current job, you really got to ask yourself why. Mm -hmm. Because um, if you've got the same pay for the last 20 years, don't be so, don't, don't be so useless at yep. this. Pick yourself up. Tell yourself, hey, you know, I've got to add more value. Because the secret word here really is just added value. Mm -hmm. So if, as a business owner, if you add more value to your customers, you get more customers. As an employee, if you add more value to your department or boss, you, you'll get more valuable to them, you, you increase your pay. Mm -hmm. So you've got to ask yourself, all right, if my current job, can I get an increment? So talk to your bosses, if you see where you can add more value, how much more increments can you get, and so mm -hmm. on, so on. Or even get into sales. So there's no limit then to the yeah. amount of money you can make. So that's, that's one. So secondly, if you're going to start a business, the real issue here is not so much multiple businesses, it's an issue of time. Yeah. Because you only have 24 hours. Yeah. So if you're going to take on a second business or a job or something like that, it's got to be something that's really going to add value to yourself. Mm -hmm. So you've got to really pay attention. So for the same amount of time that you're going to invest in the second business, where can you take that time? Mm 
-hmm. If you took this time and you put it somewhere else, well, what would you get? So the issue is, of course, they want to raise the cash flow to invest. So, so really, um, don't be too quick to start a second business. Mm -hmm. Of course, I'm pro-business. I always would recommend it. But I would first say, add, start where you are. Mm -hmm. A tree must grow where it is planted. So start where you are. Start adding huge amounts of value to the, the current place that you are, you're at. And then look at the option mm -hmm. of starting and adding a business. Um, and many people, when they start a side business, they then eventually leave employment and go yeah. full-time. Which again, is um, when you started a business, there's no limit. So starting a business has become, in Malaysia, especially with the New Companies Act, it's mm -hmm. ridiculously easy to start a yeah. business. I mean, you can have a single director, single shareholder with a new act and all that. Yeah. So it's, um, it's very pro-business, which I love, absolutely love. So I will always recommend people to start businesses because, again, um, if you're good at those four things and you really work on it, you'll do very, very well. And um, it's just that keep in mind time and keep in mind adding value. Wherever you go, whether you're an employee or employer, you must add value. So that's really important, actually. And sometimes mm -hmm. people forget that. And everyone says that, you know, if you, want, you really want to succeed in your business or your job, you need to have a why or you need to find your passion. Mm -hmm. But a lot of people don't know what their passion is. Correct. What their passion Correct. actually that's is. That's a very yeah. good point. And, and, and how do we find our passion? Okay, I'm going to tell you something very, um, uh, was not the norm, actually. And because I do get asked this question a mm -hmm. lot, people come to me and say, Jivan, I'm not passionate. How do I find my passion and how do I find you know, a business that I can be passionate about and all that? Mm -hmm. So here's what I tell everyone, and, and that is this. Don't go looking for something you love. Love what you find. Mm -hmm. So if you're in prawn farming, love prawn farming. If you're, if you're selling bate, love bate. So love whatever you do find because, you see, that's just, a, and how do you love something you do find becomes extremely good at it? I'll give you an example. Say you play badminton and you're really lousy. You won't love it at all. You'd yeah. hate it. But if you spend the time to become extremely good at badminton, you will love it. Mm -hmm. You will always love anything that you're extremely good at. So, mm -hmm. if you're in a business that you absolutely don't love and you really hate, chances are you're not very good at it. Yeah. Become very good and start surrounding yourself with really great people, a good team, good processes, good systems, good mm -hmm. marketing, good selling. You love the business. I've seen people sell nails and they love the business. They love it so <laughs> much as nails. You know, how <laughs> could you love that? But they just love it. I mean, people who sell prawn farming. I, mean, I know someone who does a prawn farm and he just absolutely loves it. Mm -hmm. And he just, just loves prawns. <laughs> so, okay. But he never always did. And, and I learned this because I ran multiple businesses and I realized it's actually not about the business. It's about how you run it. It doesn't actually matter what the business is. It's mm -hmm. Actually, it's, it's almost irrelevant. It's about how you run it, whatever mm -hmm. you do run. It's how you do the marketing, the selling, the systems, and the team. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's really the key. And I don't know if you work with millennials, you know, but yeah, if, if, you, if you have, you know, what are, what are, how does, uh, are millennials different you know, compared well, to? Well, the very big difference is, and this is very obvious in any millennial, is recognition. Mm -hmm. Some of the older generations, they, um, things like money, you pay them a good salary, you pay them well, mm -hmm. they love you, they'll stay long and they'll stay a long, 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 long time. But millennials, recognition is a very big deal. Hence, you see all the selfies, phones are coming out with better selfie cameras than <laughs> yeah. the other side. And um, then <laughs> you, you look at um, the Facebook profiles, the Instagram, recognition is mm -hmm. a very big thing. So when you work with millennials, recognize them for the good work that they do. Mm -hmm. They love it. They will absolutely love it. And because it's very high on the list, I mean, encourage them getting a lot of recognition mm -hmm. from the things that they do, especially really good work. Mm -hmm. So recognize them um, publicly and, and, and amongst their colleagues, uh, give them awards, let them win awards in your organization, and all kinds of things. And that's for that's an advice for leaders, you know, in that's how right. to manage that's right. millennials. Because many leaders what, don't what, know. What, what, what advice can you give to millennials themselves now? What are the millennials, very, very easy, very simple, become diligent. Mm -hmm. become extremely diligent because sometimes you, you get caught up in all the fun and glamour and mm -hmm. everything else and you're not diligent in your work you lose your job really quickly mm -hmm. so become diligent in anything you do whatever job you have master the, the skills within the job that you may not even like but it's necessary to for you to perform well mm -hmm. so become very very diligent do the things that sometimes you don't like you see people often look at business and they, they look look at all the movies in Hollywood and all you think yeah. that's business <laughs> a lot of business is just boring stuff done again and again yeah it's just really boring stuff like, like you know, testing marketing campaigns, measuring results, taking a look at what's working, what's not working. So mm -hmm. become diligent, you know, really, really good. Be really good at stuff. All right. And uh, now, June, please share with us your secret, you know, uh, how every single employee watching this interview mm -hmm. can double their personal wealth. 
talk about Easy. it. Easy. So first thing, uh, first things first, really, really simple. You go to the bookshop and you buy three big fat files. You get three <laughs> fat files, you label the first one B, the second one R, the third one P. So business, real estate and paper. And then you tell yourself you're going to begin. Now it begins. So every mm. month, on the 30th of the month, you, when you come home from work, you're not allowed to go out anywhere. You sit home, you bring out your three files and you audit. So if you're an employee, the business file will have all your information as an employee. Mm -hmm. um, any commissions you've made, um, your salary, mm -hmm. you audit everything, write it all down. Then you pull out the real estate file and you write that, okay, total properties bought, zero. Feel horrible, write it down, zero. <laughs> total rental collected, you don't have any properties, yeah. put that zero. Keep putting the zero, feel totally horrible when you do that. And so audit, put the zeros in, put, then you bring out the paper file, all right. Take your unit trust. What's today's value of my unit trust? How much is it? And so on. You audit every month. That's mm -hmm. first step. Second step, begin the triangle. Open mm -hmm. up three bank accounts, a sitting account, lifestyle account, profit account. Every month when your salary enters your life, split it mm -hmm. and put, if you can, live on 80% or, or less. Mm -hmm. And just learn to live. Your body will adjust. So yeah. the first time you do that, you say, Jivan, you don't understand my situation. I need a lot of money. He said, no, you will learn to live on what you've allocated. So that's the second step. And the third step, invest. Once you have accumulated enough on this side, mm -hmm. pummel it into, an in, into a property. So take a look at this. In within one to three years, as we gave the calculation just now, you should be able to buy a property already. And if you do this right in 10 years, you may have five or six properties and then mm -hmm. there's appreciation, yeah. especially if you bought landed properties, the appreciation is, is yeah. exciting. And, and, and it goes on like that. And then you see, Monopoly is a really interesting game. You buy one greenhouse, two greenhouse, three greenhouse, four, and then you switch it off for one red hotel. Yeah. So that's, that could be your movement from, say, residential to commercial, mm -hmm. or small properties to bigger properties, mm -hmm. and so on. So just do it in a systematic fashion, and mm -hmm. don't give up. So even though your friends aren't doing it, you just do it quietly, right. and just go out there and make lots of money. And Jimin, if you, if you could turn back time, you know, to yeah. say when you're 20, 20 or 25, what advice would you give yourself to your, to your younger self? I'd give the advice of um, Charlie, that Charlie Tremendous Jones, famous author, he once said this. He said, the difference between you now and you in five years' time is only two things, the books you read and the people you meet. Mm -hmm. Read no new books and meet no new people, you'll be exactly the same. Yeah. So if I could go back to my younger self the day I first started business, I would have done those two things. I would have read lots and lots more books which I do now a lot. I read a minimum of a book a Any week. Any books because, you recommend? Yes. Um, yeah, well, actually in a bit. Okay. Um, and I realized the value of reading. And the second one is I would see more people, network like crazy. Get out mm -hmm. there, meet more people. Just, just Many business owners isolate themselves. Mm -hmm. They lock themselves up in the office till midnight and things like that. Yeah. Get out there, see more people, get ideas, join incubators and all kinds of things. Mm -hmm. so, so those are the two thick pieces of advice I would give my younger self if I was to go back in time. Good books, recommend lots. Um, Again, for personal development, one of the all-time best books out there really is still uh, the classics, the two classics, uh, Tony Robbins, Awaken the Giant Within, yep. Yep. best all-time personal development book out there, along w alongside with The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, Stephen yeah, Covey. Yeah. These are classics, and yet they're just really, yeah. really good books. Um, so go out there, get it. For, for marketing and sales, um, Brian Tracy uh, has got a really yeah. interesting book, an old book, helped me a lot in my life many years ago is The Psychology of Selling. Mm -hmm. Simple book, exciting to read, fun to read, really good book as well. Yeah. Psychology of Selling, read that. Um, and also The E-Myth by Michael Gerber. Mm -hmm. E-Myth by Michael Gerber, absolutely uh, brilliant book. Right. And, and uh, well, again, there's lots of books. These are good books to start with. Okay. And uh, it's been a great conversation, Jivan. Awesome. What's next for you? The question is, what's next for you? Any books? Well, are you yes. Your own for book? me, next is... Um, Everyone has been asking me for this, mm -hmm. your book, Jivan, when's your book coming out? <laughs> right. So I've decided maybe this year, by towards the end of the year, I'll get my book out. Okay. And uh, my, my hope is that any business owner out there, if you're struggling, uh, whether you just started your business or you've been in business for many, many years, you just have to buy my book and you'll change your life completely. You know let exactly us know when your do. book is out so we Definitely. can do another yeah, interview here. We would just love to do that. talk yeah. about it. And then uh, if anyone wants to get in touch with you, what's the best? What's, um, what's well, the, the best easiest way? way really is um, just well, pop me an email on my, uh, my Gmail, mm -hmm. jivansahadevan at gmail.com. All right. That's it. Just drop me an email. Um, it's easy, jivansahadevan at gmail.com. Easy to remember. All right. Yeah. And guys, thanks again for joining us. We hope you enjoyed the program. And if you do, please subscribe to our, uh, our channel, like our page, or even drop a comment. We'd love to hear from you. Once again, I'm Jonathan Roberts from Star Property TV. See you next time.